Okay, so before you guys get all confused as to why I'm just posting a video from when I was in LA now, I wanted to give a little bit of a brief explanation just so you guys aren't confused going through the video. I am actually in Toronto right now, so this video was from before all the gyms got shut down. We decided to hold off on posting it because we didn't want to post any content that wouldn't be really relatable to you guys and you couldn't use it immediately. So we decided to hold off until the gyms began to open back up, which they have recently. So that's why today I'm releasing this video. It's three high intensity techniques for you guys to build bigger biceps specifically now that some of you guys can try these out in the gym we decided to release it i'm not going to talk anymore just enjoy the video today we're going to be showing you guys an at-home workout i'm literally just in my living room right now chilling on my couch but i can use the stuff that's around me i got straps on and i got belt on because i always got to be prepared in case someone brings a barbell in. but i got a couch i got some stuff i can jump onto this i can lift my fridge i can do all this random shit that all these instagram influencers are telling you to do this may not be the best area to do it because we don't want to get the couch dirty and stuff so i'm going to take you to the other room of my house and then you guys can can see the full workout let's go Okay, so this is my dining area. <laughs> no, with all seriousness, we're not doing an at-home workout because everybody's posting that and why would I do the same thing as everyone else? Today, we're gonna be doing three different high intensity techniques that I'm gonna show you guys to help you build massive arms. In my previous video with the Nelk boys, I don't know how many videos ago that was, we did a technique using isometric hold where we hold at the bottom of the motion for 20, 30 seconds. That's gonna be one of the techniques. Another technique that we're gonna use today is partial reps, which I found help a lot with building my biceps specifically. And then the last technique that we're gonna work with is cluster sets and I can explain more once we get into the video. Let's get into it. First exercise we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the isometric holds. Usually in my workouts, I won't do three different high intensity techniques, but I wanna show you guys the different techniques using different exercises. We're gonna start with the isometric holds with a barbell. Basically what we're gonna do is hold at the center of the motion. We're gonna flush as much blood into the muscle as possible. I'm gonna keep tension. I'm gonna to try to go slightly below 90 degrees just so that there's enough tension and enough stretch on my bicep. And then from there, I'm gonna hold for 20 to 30 seconds. So my weight's not gonna be as high, but I'm gonna have a lot of tension on the muscle throughout the entire set. And it's gonna be a longer working set. So I'm probably gonna pick 40 or 50 pounds and then after I'm done the isometric hold for 20 to 30 seconds I'm just gonna pump out as many reps as I can and then maybe even force a few partials okay so what I'll do with these workouts when I'm doing isometric holds and focusing on my rest periods a lot which is very important when you're using these high intensity techniques so that you're able to keep the intensity up throughout your entire workout is I'll set a timer for myself and I'll keep my rest very strict as well as my isometric hold time very strict so if I'm setting this I'll look at it 20 30 seconds finishes I'm holding here and then right away I'm into my reps right as I set it down then I can see the rest period for this i'm probably going to be taking a minute to a minute and a half rest so a little bit more rest it's not super short but it's enough to recover so that we're able to do a full set on our next time so i'm going to set this in front of me and then we can just start our first set So my next set, I'll probably go a little bit heavier and overload that isometric hold a little bit because that was still pretty easy. And then aim for more like 12 to 15 reps instead of going higher up into the 20 range because then we're basically just doing cardio. So I'll probably go up to 50 pounds. You don't need extreme amount of weights for biceps. It's a small muscle group. When you're in the isometric hold, you want it to have the low enough that it's not easy you're not releasing tension at the top but also high enough that it's not relaxed at the bottom and the whole time you want to focus on squeezing your biceps keeping everything tight turning supinating as much as possible focus on squeezing your biceps as hard as you can that's the whole point of the hold is to flush blood in the muscle so if you're just releasing tension the whole time you're not going to get that blood in the muscle and not going to get the growth that you want <clears throat> i'm going to take about a minute rest since that wasn't a hard set and i'm going to go back to my second set so I finished my set around the minute 30 mark. So I'm gonna wait till two minutes and 30 seconds. And I'm gonna go right in my next set and keep the intensity high. Ready, three, two, one, right into the hole. Already, I'm like two sets in. Blood's already flushing into the muscle a ton. A little bit out of breath. A little bit. 
I need to do more cardio, I guess. So I stopped around 3.30. I'll probably go closer to like four minutes and 45 seconds. So that's a minute 15 rest. A little bit more rest on this one since the intensity got higher and higher. Each set, I like to try to raise the bar so that my intensity goes up. And with my final set, I'm working to absolute failure. Nothing left in the tank. And I may even go a little bit heavier than this. One thing that you'll notice with a lot of my exercises in my previous video as well as in this video is that I use progressive overload in each of my exercises. So I'll start with the lightweight, get the technique down, get the form down, get the contraction, the mind muscle connection. And then as I progress, I like to work up to my top weight, do one or two sets, and then I move on to my next exercise. It's not about doing 10 working sets because you're gonna fatigue yourself early and eventually get to the point where A, you're just doing cardio and you're just not able to contract the muscle. So we took a little bit more rest. Oh, but we're gonna get right into it. So our third set, we're gonna do four. Four, even then I cheated a few of the reps there just so that I can get more volume in which is absolutely fine. I'm still contracting my biceps. What happens when you get those last reps and you push past the failure point, you use a little bit of body language, is you're getting everything to fire explosively. So if I'm just contracting like this and I'm never forcing myself past that failure point, then I'm not getting everything to fire as much as I want it to. I'm gonna drop the weight back down. My ego was was way too, way too high on that set. 60 pounds, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm gonna drop back down to 50 and then get try to get more volume in. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know when that ended. So I'm probably gonna take like maybe 25, 30 more seconds rest. Another thing is listening to what your body feels. If you're too tired to get a full set in, then take a little bit more rest and get the volume in during that set. Make sure you're actually working versus just going. You're fatigued already, you get five reps, put the weight down, you're not getting as much volume in. Take your time, take a little bit more rest and get the full set done. So I'm gonna go at 7.30, 7 minutes and 30 seconds. And again, in this one, 30 second hold, and then just force as many reps as possible. So that's, that's literally it, four sets. I don't usually count my reps very religiously. If I'm aiming for like 12 reps, eight to 12 reps through every set, first set maybe a little bit more because I'm just getting warmed and into it. I don't keep it religiously to, okay, I need to hit 15 because then you get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm just aiming for that 15 number. I'm thinking about my reps, but I'm not contracting the right muscles. So when we just keep it in a range, we know we're gonna get at least eight reps. We wanna get eight quality reps versus just 15 shitty reps. Then your, your sets are gonna be way more quality. You're gonna get way better pump, way better contraction, and then eventually way more growth. So that's it for this, for the isometric holds. You guys can try that one out for yourselves. Next, we're gonna move on to some dumbbell curls, some incline dumbbell curls, and we're gonna do cluster sets. So for cluster sets, I'm gonna use a decent weight. See how it feels. First set, I wanna be getting 12 to 15 reps, and then I set it, rest for only like 10 seconds, go right back in with the same weight. So it's another high intensity technique. Basically what we're doing is we're forcing reps with the same weight, very intense, not a lot of rest. And then after you completed the cluster set, then you obviously get more rest, so. Setting up the bench here. You can see I'm not going ridiculously low. Your bicep can only stretch so far before you're just putting tons of tension on your shoulder. Right here, it's, what, what would you say? 30, 30 degrees, if even not. If I sit down here, look how much more of a stretch I'm getting here versus here. I'm also gonna be using way less body movement to get the reps up. So when I'm doing something like cluster sets, it's gonna force me to really contract only my biceps. When I've done videos in the past, you've seen me do the sets where I raise the bar up like this. Your bicep connects right into your shoulder joint. So when you do this movement, you're actually hitting this part of your, this portion of your bicep, which a lot of people neglect, where they're just doing normal curls like this and hitting this portion, this portion, brachialis with hammer curls. But if you actually come here, or if you're raising up like this, you're hitting the upper portion of your bicep, which a lot of people are lacking in. So I'm probably gonna go light on this. I'm gonna do 20 to 25 pounds. Aim for like 15 reps on my first set. Rest for like 10 seconds. Right back into it, probably try to get 10 reps. 
Rest for like 10 seconds, drop, try to get like six, maybe even less reps. Just three times, you're gonna drop. Super intense, there's barely any rest and you just get a ridiculous pump, so you guys should try it. Right from the beginning of the motion, since this movement is about getting a good stretch in your bicep, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna retract and keep it in this position. So I'm retracting back and down, and here, my arm is completely straight. I'm just squeezing through the bicep. It's almost similar to doing like a drag curl, if you think about it, you're bringing the bar really close, if not behind your, your bodies. So I'm gonna do probably 12 to 15 reps on my first set and then drop from there. So what I like about using dumbbells, I'm only gonna take 10 seconds rest and say this very quickly, but what I like about using dumbbells is you can fully supinate as much as possible and turn your wrists out. So when you're curling, you get way more bicep activation than you would with just a, an easy bar. I'll show it in this set, since I'm supposed to be getting right into it. When I curl, I'm gonna try to turn my wrist outwards as much as possible, and that's what supination is. You can see my hands all the way to the end of the dumbbell. There's not gonna be as much forearm engagement, and I'm able to really force through the pinky. So I dropped the weight to 20 pounds since 25 was too heavy. Not a lot of reps at all. You just go right into it and just force as many reps as you can. It's not a ton of reps in the last two sets. Six to eight, four to six. Just push as hard as you can. Get a good stretch, good contraction. We're gonna do this three times through. <clears throat> Okay, so now that I finished my first cluster set, I'm gonna take more rest with this since it is more taxing on your CNS. You're doing a lot of volume, you're not getting a lot of rest during the movement. So now I'm gonna take anywhere between a minute 30 to two minutes rest, and then I'm gonna jump right into my next one. I'm gonna repeat this three times through. I'm probably gonna stick with like 20 pounds. I'm telling you guys, you don't need a huge amount of weight to build muscle, nor do you need a huge amount of weight to do this, this technique. So 20 pounds, 25 pounds. The max I would go is probably 30, and even today, I don't even think I can after doing the, the isometric hold. So I'm gonna stick with 20 pounds, and then after this we're gonna go to cable curls second set 100 pound dumbbells don't don't just photoshop it out just make it look like 100 pound dumbbells Rest, and then I'll try to get like eight reps on my next one. I gotta say, you're the only person I know that has to kick it back to do dumbbell curls. What do you mean kick it back? You gotta kick the weight back to do dumbbell curls. Oh yeah, kick it up and then back down. Yeah, I just said it. I just said it on my lap first and then go back. It's called technique. That's science. So this is how I like to do it. Gotta kick it up first and then go down. So you go like this, like this. Good. Yeah. Okay. And then down. So we're doing similar to the blood flow restriction. So we're forcing blood metabolites to fill up in the muscle. So that's how you'll see, you'll see sometimes I'll be able to do one rep very easily and then the next rep, I just can't do any of my, my biceps just so full. I know everybody likes getting pumped in the gym. So using these high intensity techniques to force blood into the muscle is very good for muscle growth as well as Instagram videos if you're trying to be an Instagram influencer, so. More like an Instagram hoe. <laughs> Stretch. 
last exercise, usually with my arm workouts, I'll usually only do three exercises, three to four per muscle group with my biceps and triceps. Today, we're just focusing on biceps since that's what everybody wants, even though triceps are what really makes your arm look big. I'm literally just gonna finish with cable curls, a lot less tension on the joint, just focusing on squeezing the muscle versus using free weights. We're gonna be working with partial reps. I know a lot of people do 21, but I'm not gonna be doing 21s today. If you don't know what 21s are, it's seven full, seven upper half, and seven lower half. I'm actually only gonna be working with the upper half of the partial to get the actual contraction of the bicep rather than more of a stretch. Probably gonna do higher volume on this. I'm gonna be looking at like 20 reps per set. I'm gonna do as many full reps as I can as soon as I can, come up to halfway, and I'm just forcing partials with a little bit of a raise too so that we hit this upper portion, the peak of your bicep. You guys have been seeing me posting peak checks and stuff. If you guys want the peak like right here, that's developed through this this half of the motion. So don't, don't neglect that. This is so sick. Like this is the first gym that I've seen. It's like an actual like barbell and it's like really light. It's way better. It's fake weights. There's actually knurling on the bar rather than rubber on the bar where it slips and it's really slippery. Yeah, you must have bought that from Uncle Brad, right? Just fake weights. 100%. So I'm gonna lean slightly forward so that I'm not taking any tension off by pushing into the cable at the bottom. Lean slightly forward and keep your elbows more in front of you. Flex your tricep at the bottom. Full wraps up. And then a little bit of a squeeze at the top. So you don't have to do even a ton of partials at the end. It can be five to eight reps. You just really focus on contracting it. Getting those forced reps again, the same thing that we did with uh, the isometric holes, forcing the reps with a little bit of body movement. It's really gonna take you to the next level in building your bicep. So with all the movements that I'm not trying to hit my brachialis, this portion of your bicep, and this like it runs all the way into your forearm, I'll try to use my pinkies and focus on that. So even with this, even with this barbell, I can go right to the end so that all the pressure is going through the outside of my hand and I can really focus on that supination. That's why I don't usually like using easy bars because it forces you to pronate a little bit. So having a straight bar that you can really supinate with is good. Two more sets. So for this, I'm doing four sets. If you watch most of his videos, he's not actually focusing on getting a good contraction. He's focusing on getting a good angle. It's been proven that if 50% of the time you don't get a good angle, then 50% of the time you're getting a shitty workout. Taking a lot of rest. No, I'm not. The jump cut was only three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that you should do you should show them like the in the stretch position just holding it like that so with the barbell curls i used a little bit higher just because i wanted to focus a little bit more on contraction so i do my set i try to aim for like 12 to 15 reps full reps then with with the raise at the top then i do the partials this slight raise here and then after that you just hold for as long as you can still keeping tension on your bicep and squeezing your arms but just like right here at the bottom flush as much blood in the muscle as possible another isometric holds last set i usually do this on my final set where i'm just going to absolutely destroy my biceps or just kill whatever muscle group that I'm training. So we're gonna do 12 to 15 full reps, probably like five to 10 partials at the top of the motion, and then just hold for as long as we can.
Ready? Oh. 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 So what I think is is kind of cool about doing this style workout is that you can do it at home as well. You can use bands, you can use dumbbells if you have cheap dumbbells at home. Even if it's just lightweight, you can just use higher volume and use these high intensity techniques so that you're maintaining your gains while this whole thing is going on. So, you know, you can lean up against the wall the same way you would have a bench. Keep yourself set in the right position and do band curls. Or if you do have a set of dumbbells, if you are, you can order them on Amazon. Amazon's still running so you can get dumbbells. You can even get cheap benches to do this workout for yourself at home. So if you don't have access to a gym, get yourself some bands, get yourself some light dumbbells or even a bench or something, and you can do this workout at home. As long as you're really taking each set or the last set of each exercise to failure, you should be able to maintain your muscle mass regardless of the load. If you have bands or any sort of tension, then you'll be able to maintain a certain amount. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you're enjoying this style of video where we talk about different techniques for building mass, high intensity techniques, or even just uh, sets, reps, all this stuff explained, please leave a like, leave a comment down below which one you'd like to see next. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for an abs video. We're gonna be filming one soon and then you guys can try that out for yourself, maybe even at home abs workout or something like that during this time period. Let me know down in the comments below. Turn on post notifications, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.